Oh, all right. My world was just rocked. Welcome, everybody. My name is Jim, and I am the host of this episode of Chill with Jim, where it is always business up top and pajamas on the bottom. Like, thank everyone for coming out and joining us. Uh, I'm your host, and I am the client advocate for Strix Louisiana. My job is to make sure that our clients are set up with the best equipment, the best software, and the best possible IT solutions to help make sure that their businesses are running at optimal efficiency. We also have David DeArmond with us, the owner of Strix. Hey guys, David DeArmon here, owner of Strix LA, and I appreciate you being out. Looking forward to this one. This will be fun. It will be fun. It will. Uh, so a little bit about Strix real quick. Uh, we believe that there's always a better, simpler, more secure way to do just about everything in this world. So what that means to us is we're constantly searching and adapting our processes to make sure that we do indeed have the best solution in place. We believe that part of this responsibility is to help educate others as well as our own clients, um, the best resources that are out there, some IT trends in the world today. We touch on some productivity every now and then. And we also get the chance to have special guests. And so our pleasure today is to have special guest McHugh David with the Livingston Parish News with us. Welcome. Good. I was about to say good morning. Good afternoon, guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, so um, we have a really cool one lined up. McHugh's gonna talk about pro-level podcasting. Uh, he's been doing it for quite a while. If you guys have seen his content, it is extremely high quality um, film work, sound, and, and it's great. You're a great interviewer. So we're gonna get into a lot of that today. McHugh, if you wanted just to start out by you know giving us a little intro, uh, that would be great. Uh, sure. Uh, thanks. I, uh, my name is McHugh David. As he said, I'm, I'm publisher and editor of the Livingston Parish News. Uh, I also own a light company called Southern Lighting Solutions. Uh, I took over uh, here at the paper when my father died of cancer uh, in October of 2015. And one of the things I wanted to do was maintain uh, the print side and, you know, keep keep those customers happy while also trying to expand into different realms, especially digitally. Uh, after a few years, I realized that, you know, podcasting was sort of an open realm. Uh, I had an interesting uh, I, both insight and uh, ability to pull uh, information. And um, I already had a built-in viewership because we have about 30,000 followers on our Facebook but I guess the, the best way of saying it is like I was already doing interviews with, you know, business owners, politicians, that sort of thing uh, for the paper. Well, why not, you know, do the audio? Why not do the video? Show it to people. Uh, so about two and a half years ago, I delved into this realm of podcasting and, you know, slowly but steadily have uh, tried to improve the audio and video versions. Uh, as you can see right now, I'm, I'm in my studio at the office uh, we have soundproofing on the walls. These are our banners. Cameras right over there, and we'll get into some more of that in a second. But um, I, I did have uh, we had a weekly show where we were doing interviews. I had a daily show where I was doing uh, sort of a morning update kind of deal. Uh, put both of those on pause right about the end of political season this year as we went into the holidays because we are updating the morning update to be more of a weekly show talk around between me and my fellow editors here at the paper and uh, kind of giving people a break after this past political season. Uh, we're gonna be picking up with the regular podcast uh, every Thursday coming up in February. So that's kind of uh, where I came from and uh, how I ended up here on your show. You and I are in B&I together. Guess I should throw that out there. Yes, yes. So, um, well, thank you for that intro and it's very interesting. I know, um, so we've gotten to know each other um, and, and hearing some of your stories and, and what you do, it's just, uh, it's a pretty amazing story hearing you come up through taking over after the passing and um, really just taking charge with the news yourself and, and falling into that role because they, they needed that role, but excelling in it. So um, today, you know, I, I wanted to talk about quite a few things. We have some questions that we have lined up that some of us have 
thought of. Um, we've kind of put it out there to see what, what people are interested in asking you. So we have some pre-LIM questions we're gonna go over. And then we'll go into kind of more of a question and answer for the audience, uh, for all those people out there in Facebook land as well. So um, you told us a lot about how you got your podcasting started, like why that came about. Um, and, you know, I see all this technology around you. So before we kind of get into it, I was just wondering, have you always had an interest in the technology side? Um, you know, with looking into the, you know, computers, microphones, all that, have you always had an interest in that? Yeah, yeah. So that, it's a good question. Even before I started doing this, I was, um, I had my FAA license. I can fly a drone. Uh, I had been doing a lot with, with phones, you know, they're, they're pretty amazing. And especially when it came to the newspaper, I'd been doing a lot of audio and videoing out in the field, uh, you know, politicians and that kind of thing and posting it. And, uh, you know, one of the things I really started to, to dive deep on is this guy right here, which it, it just looks like a little black square, but this is my laptop, uh, you know, with computers. Uh, because you started to realize as you started to delve deep with, um, I use Adobe Suite, and I know that's one of your questions. We'll get into it later. Uh, but, you know, uh, they have a cloud subscription-based service now. So they, they kind of up the ante every year about what the requirements are. And I started getting really interested in uh, the individual pieces of that, you know, uh, different kinds of hard drives, different kinds of processors. You know, the fact that just because, you know, you call up Cox and say, I need, you know, I need 600 down and 100 up at my office, and they're like, okay, it's going to be $310 a month, you may not have the appropriate uh, Ethernet card, or uh, I, I should say network card in your laptop or computer to even handle that. Uh, so I started getting involved in sort of the nuts and bolts of, of both the hardware and software. Uh, and that kind of led me to start diving in on, you know, it, it was set up for when I got into podcasting, it was like, okay, so here are the different things that you're going to need. What did I have already? I already had a camera. You know, what did I need? I needed microphones, uh, you know, and we started going down that path. And I mean, I'm, I'm trying not to get too deep into it because I know some of this revolves around a question you're going to ask me later. Uh, but it, it very much love the tech side of it. We have a, a workbench for the light company right outside. And, um, you know, we, I, I burn marks all over my fingers because we like <laughs> to play with that stuff. Uh, so both my business partner and I love to get down in the nitty gritty of things, but it, once you kind of open that world, it, it's pretty amazing. Once you learn the little details, how much faster you can make things go uh, when you, you kind of know, you know, how to maintain your computer properly, uh, how to keep that, that stuff up to date. And the best part about it is, in my opinion, if you understand how things work at that base level you don't have to run around and spend $2,500, $5,000 on a computer or a camera or something like that. You can, you know what you need for what you're doing and you can attack it from that angle. And a lot of times it'll save you a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. And, you know, I like to start with kind of see some of that passion, you know, the, the why behind it, we heard it with your podcasting. And I thought if I asked that technology question, I would get that same response and we could just see it. I could see it light up. I know David, I'm watching David's face over here. He's smiling at all your answers. So um, we'll go ahead and start some of these prelim questions here. Uh, these are kind of just talking about podcast topics and, and content generation and things like that. You know, when you're coming up with these and, and deciding what, what you'd like to do a podcast on, how are you choosing topics and making sure that they're, they're relevant, but also like engaging with the audience at the same time? That's a good question. So, you know, when we were doing the podcast on a weekly basis, which is what I started with, I didn't start with the morning show, I pulled that in later. Uh, but when we were doing the weekly podcast, a lot of times it was trying to find things that were happening, you know, in the community at that time, and getting people in that could talk about it in, in real time. So it made turnaround pretty quick, you know, but the nice thing about the job that I'm in right now, and how I can translate that into podcasting is, a lot of times I've got the background. I've been covering it or Rob's been covering it or David Gray's been covering it. So we can, you know, sit down if I'm going to be the one sort of moderating it or guiding it, 
you know, I'll talk to either one of them about where they want to go with the discussion. Or if I'm talking with them, you know, Rob and I, every, the past two football seasons have sat down and done a football podcast. And Rob's great. Rob's very passionate about local sports. Uh, and those shows were a lot of fun. But we have already kind of have the data. And we know we can see what's trending. Uh, you know, a lot of times we look at our uh, users on the website and on Facebook, we're going to see what's getting clicks, what people are interested in. And then we try to, I guess you can say, grow from there. Uh, you know, especially this past political season, uh, I won't talk too much about it, but, uh, you know, we had the road program tax in Livingston Parish, which was a big deal. So we had the parish president and his finance director on. And then on another side, we had a very contentious judges race. And, you know, one of them did two. And the other one did one podcast, but a lot of that is more, it, it, it adds a little layer to it. You know, it gives it more than just words on paper with me, with a picture, like a headshot. You get to see that person. You get to see how they carry themselves. Uh, they're on a microphone. You know, a lot of times it's not live, which makes some people a little nervous, but it, it, it is something that's going to go out in front of the public and they get to see who they're voting for. You know, especially in a parish like we have right here where they're expecting 160, 165,000 on the newest census, getting that in front of thousands of people without having to go door to door is both nerve wracking, I think, for these guys, but at the same time, it's very helpful. Uh, so sort of a two parter there. It, it's helpful for the people that we're bringing in, whether it's business or politics, sports uh, or the community type news or lifestyle news. Uh, but it also sort of lends itself because of the job we've had. You know, we, we, we're covering the parish. We know what's going on. Uh, we're going to get people in the studio that want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. You have the data right in front of you. That's got to be nice. Um, we're a lot of times, and we're coming at this from an approach because we, we're very interested ourselves and with the Chill with Jim shows and like coming up with content, picking ideas where it's great you have those statistics where you can really look back at um so you don't have those hit or miss ones like the hands-free one where it doesn't quite go as you plan um so uh <laughs> that is great um but yeah and you, you really talked on a couple of things i was going to ask you but just you know the planning out process of the of the podcast so you you touched on that um and then do you ever you said it's a, a week it was a weekly thing did you ever have any, you know, kind of um, big special event ones where you would maybe put a little bit more time into planning uh, or there was some some big event coming out where you knew like, oh, I'm going to put a little more time into this one? I had a couple of those. Uh, actually, we had um, at the time he was still with Jim Rathman, but Woody Overton was coming in and, <laughs> you know, I'm showing a little bit of my other side here, but uh uh, my wife, Melanie, um, it, you know, she was into that stuff. And when she found out they were coming on, I knew I knew of Woody from his time at the sheriff's department. You know, I was already kind of working here, um, but I, I, I didn't know how big they had gotten. And, you know, they came in here and they were kind of doing a little tour thing because they had that. Um, he, well, now he is the only one, but they had that podcast they were doing. And, you know, it, it, it was very interesting to see. Uh, Melanie sitting there saying, yeah, are you ready? Are you prepared for this? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know I know about Woody. I know about their past and stuff like that. She said, have you ever listened to the podcast? I said, no, that's your that's your realm. And she said, here, listen. And, you know, I started to realize what the what the draw was and things like that. So I took uh, a pretty, pretty solid two weeks because uh, it was scheduled out. You know, they were very busy. They knew that they were coming into town. And I, I was very honored, you know, considering the following they had that they gave me a chance. But I, I started reading a little bit more about both of them uh, post Livingston Parish Sheriff's Department, what they had been doing. And I started reading a little bit more about, uh, you know, the podcast itself, listening to it. Uh, so that that was a special one uh, that was unfortunately next to um, the, the sheriff talking about Dennis and Cynthia Perkins. Um, that was probably the most watched we've had. Unfortunately, the one um, with the sheriff was the, uh, you know, was the most watched. It was also the one I had the least time to prepare for. Of course, I had been following the story, uh, but he had done a press conference just that morning and, and he called me and he said, can I come do your podcast? I was like, yeah, I guess I can't tell you. No, uh, I could have, but you know, you know what I mean? In principle, I couldn't. So uh, that, that was, that was a big one uh, that, that kind of took me, took me a while to get prepared for. 
Uh, the second one was, was a political one. It was the first political one I ever did. And it took me about three weeks to get prepared for it. I was interviewing uh, Brian Abels, who was, uh, it, this was two political seasons ago. He was also running for judge. And, you know, my father was a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a notary. But I wanted to try to break down the judge's race beyond politics. You know, I wanted to really ask him pertinent questions that were important for the public as someone who was going to go into uh, a judge's position, you know, beyond just having an R or a D in front of your name or an I for some people, you know, why, why should people select you for judge? What are you going to bring to the bench that's different from your opponents uh, that you think would get, that would be beneficial to the 21st judicial district, which actually makes up three parishes, uh, Livingston, Tangy, and St. Helena. So that was, that took me a while to prepare. Uh, it would have been nice to have my dad around to ask him some questions about, you know, here's a lawyer running for judge. What should I ask him? Uh, but I bounced a lot of ideas around, uh, a lot of ideas off of a lot of different people. Uh, so those were probably the two, um, you know, cause, cause you're kind of creating a template, right? So after that, if I having, uh, you know, having another podcaster on, uh, like doing uh, Jim Chapman, who has a local podcast here, getting him on. I had a lot of the questions that I had asked uh, Woody Overton and Jim Rathman. I was able to translate a lot of those over and Jim and I were able to kind of go back and forth and it worked. Uh, you know, so you kind of get these templates, but it's those initial templates you're creating. That's what takes the most time. And I know in software, y'all know exactly how that goes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, so some big names there, you know, um, that's what true true life crime true true was it yeah true uh real true life crime. real crime real life real crime podcast it's got huge following I, I huge. don't know where it's relate rated but it was it was in the top five for sure for a while yeah for so se for several years he's he's played around with the top fifty um, he's been in and out and as high as I be I believe he got first um, okay. when he was speaking on the case out of Alexandria and, and I, I feel bad. I cannot remember the lady's name, um, but it, it's uh, Courtney, I believe is her name. And uh, there's a lot going on there. It's a very tense and testy subject. And when he had started alluding to it, he had been going out there and, and getting on his podcast and discussing uh, the process he was going through and that kind of thing. He, he, he was getting very popular, especially among Louisiana people. Uh, but, you know, those the interesting thing about sort of the crime genre is it, it sort of crosses borders. Right. I mean, people in Europe are interested in it. Uh, people in other parts of the country that are not called Louisiana are interested in it as well. And he's good. You know, he is he was a good detective, still is a good detective and he's a good storyteller. You know, and that's the interesting thing. You know, all podcasts are different. Uh, but, uh, you know, Woody can tell a good story. He's real good at it. And so it, it's very uh, captivating and, and he does a good job with it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some big name. And, and then Jim, um, Jim Chapman has his um, local leaders, right. Mm -hmm. And that's a podcast that McHugh was helping uh, for quite a while do, to kick off and, and to do a lot of the production side, I believe. Right. McHugh. Yes, yes. I was doing um, I was doing the sound and the video for him. And uh, then he went in and made, made some little edits to add graphics. And I believe he had a few advertisers as well uh, that he ended up in putting uh, in those later. Uh, but um, I've gotten, you know, I'm trying to start these back up here, as mentioned in February. And um, I'm doing one with uh, with my business partner on lighting, and then I'm all. I also might be starting one uh, with Melanie. She wants to do one about trending topics on Twitter. That could get that could get interesting. I, <laughs> we, we haven't pulled the trigger on that one yet. Okay. Uh, but uh, you know, I, it, it would be fun. Uh, but yeah, he um, he got some office space, and he wanted to use his own studio, and uh, he got some great equipment over there. And um, it, I think it gives him a little more flexibility. He, he doesn't have to worry about my timeline uh, or my time. You know, he can do it whenever he's free and his interviewee is free. And he's good. He does. Um, he, he's, he's big on Joe Rogan. So he likes the interview style. And he does uh, a, a, some great things for these local business people, really giving them a chance uh, to tell their story in a long form format uh, and get it out there. 
Awesome. Awesome. So we're talking about, you know, some of the guests you've had, and it's a great way to segue into this next part. Uh, you know, when, when you're looking for a, a guest to have on your podcast, right? Um, is there like a certain way that you, that you go about that? Is there certain, you know, you're trying to hit certain people. Um, I know David Diarman uh, was one of your very famous, famous. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Two billion view uh, ones. So you had him on, um, which which was great. And I gotta say, like one of my favorite things about McHugh's podcast are his ability to interview people, and and that's where I just see such a huge benefit. You know how to ask the right questions in the in like such a a good way. Um, and also, I've learned a lot watching him with trying to. <laughs> watch my ums and my ahs and my when I'm speaking because I tend to do that quite especially right at the beginning out uh this is uh Jim with uh um chill with Jim and um I'm here so so watching McHugh has been really awesome for me but how is there some way that you choose your guests well first I'm going to say if you want to work on those ums I would recommend either Toastmasters or Dale Carnegie or both it's very helpful. Uh, Dale Carnegie is very good about getting you to keep talking and, you know, believing in yourself. You know, you're talking about something uh, in which you believe. So, uh, Mr. David, I, I can tell you, uh, they, they have a program for small businesses uh, where the state will pay for it. So, highly recommend that. At any rate, how I select guests is very much depends on what's going on. So we talked a little bit about it earlier, right? What's going on inside the parish, how things are developing. We had one recent, well, actually the very last one that I did before I shut it down for the holidays uh, was with uh, Miss Brandy Plaisance with Espresso Go. And what was fun about that is that it was not a difficult interview because she was very passionate about what she does, right? And it was very easy to, to walk her through that, but she had been recommended to me because she had a good business. She was expanding, so she had a little bit of news for the audience, right? She was gonna be opening a physical location. So the, if you don't know what Espresso Go is, it was a coffee truck that is now graduating into a coffee truck and a physical location in Watson. And their coffee is very good. And having that little bit of news to share, as well as getting them to tell their story, is kind of how I bring things together from the business side. So when I'm selecting a business uh, guest, I'm looking for getting their story out, but as well as somebody who can share some news that's interesting and, and different. When I'm selecting somebody for political, usually that's just because there's something going on that they have something to talk about. You know, I've had we talked about the sheriff earlier. I had the parish president, the parish finance director come talk about the road program. I've had Mr. Gary Frog Talbert come on here and pontificate about just about everything. <laughs> Watch as we have thousands of viewers for the first 30 minutes and then not a whole lot after that. And we've had, you know, a, a few different kinds of people come through from the political realm to talk about this, that, and the other. I did a couple of folks uh, running for the town of Livingston, a few aldermen and the mayor, or well, the guy who's now the mayor, Mr. JT. I will not claim his victory. Uh, I think he owes that partially to the fact that he got out there and did did the work and, and because he is a tailor. Uh, please don't hold that against me, JT. But, you know, selecting those guys, the, it was, the timing was right. The timing was pertinent. It was important. And I thought that in that case, those the information they had to provide was needed by the public. Uh, so they were doing that. When you talk about other types of news, a lot of it just depends on what's going on. Uh, you know, the football one, the sports one, are usually it's just a weekly update. Here's what happened in the games last week. Here's what the coaches are trying to fix. And here's what they expect this week. COVID was tough. You know, COVID was very difficult for the football show because a lot of these teams struggled because of COVID. You know, they'd have kids in, kids out. You know, we had one team, Albany, that was looking to be a playoff team. And then they had to cancel the rest of their season because of COVID. They were going to miss the last game and they would have missed the first game of the playoffs. And the LHSAA said, you know, we can't do anything for you. So it's interesting. It's, it's an interesting question because a lot of times 
preparation after I've invited them has been more of a focus. Uh, it, inviting these people to be on the show has been more timing based than anything else, except uh-huh. the business people. Uh, that has been people who have uh, are able to give me their story as well as some some interesting news to come out of what they're doing. Uh, so I'm I'm actually looking forward to doing more business because a lot of times getting a politician in here to come talk about something, people don't care about their story, right? Uh, I want you to talk about the road tax. That's it. Don't talk about anything else. I don't care. Right, I know right. I know who you I know who you are, right? <laughs> But when you get business folks in here, you get to talk about that story and blend it with what they're doing. Uh, David was an easy one. That was easy. You know, once once I got his story out of him, it was very easy to blend that together with what y'all do at Strix. So, you know, there are some that aren't easy, but it's funny because once you get them started, they very easily sort of transition into talking about what they do. But anyway, you know, picking people for the show is very much a timing based thing for politicians, sports news, all that. It just kind of rolls with the production schedule we already have for the paper. But picking business people is about trying to find those folks uh, that really want to get up here and tell their story, even if they're a little nervous at first. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, that's that's a great. And um, so now I think it's some of us have been excited for this part. Uh, let's nerd out a little bit and talk some technology. Okay. I know we got a couple of, of people joining us today that um, they're really into ec- electronics, computers, technology. So this is going to be fun for all of us. Um, so when you're when you're coming up with, well, you've, you've talked about some of your battles before with with sound and stuff like that. But you know, what type of equipment are you using right now that you're getting this this high quality picture along with a high quality sound? Okay, so. And please, 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 somebody start a timer because uh-uh. uh, I, I may sit here for a while and go through this because this this really has been, uh, you, you know, because I've been doing interviews and things like that with the paper forever. So getting into the tech part of it was was what I really enjoyed. But so starting off, one of the things I, I realized was having uh, a contained space and, and, you know, we a lot of people might have seen my original morning show and some of the earlier podcasts we did. I'm in the same room. I just changed some things up a little bit. So even when you're talking about tech, one of the main things that is important, especially when you're talking about high quality video and sound is light. And I've actually got a specialty light above me that we actually just replaced and two ring lights off to the side, you know, and you're trying to make sure that you don't you know, I'm, I'm pasty. I can call, call spade a spade, but you, you know, so I don't want to wash myself out, but it's important because the way a camera works is that it's absorbing light, right? And even if you open the lens all the way to absorb that light, you would be surprised how poor light really is for a camera inside. So having that light is, is one of the first things I start with because it really enhances the, the way the picture looks. You're going to get better frames. uh, You're going to get less blur. And usually, as as Melanie likes to tell me, the the subject's going to look a lot better too. So you got to start with, you got to start with light wherever you are. That's that's my problem. That's how I don't don't look as good as I I think I do. Exactly. It's the light in this room. Okay. I will tell you right now, they have LED light circles on Amazon for $35. And they'll be at your door in two days. And you could even drop down to the $20 version, which is basically handheld or you can mount it on your phone. You know, I mean, that's how a lot of these folks, um, you know, a lot of sort of individual podcasters, like they're doing solo podcasts, maybe they're gaming streamers. uh, They're just talking about politics or whatever, or, you know, maybe uh, there's another girl locally who does a Disney podcast with her friend, you know, but they're both on their computer in two different places and they have little small ring lights. But, you know, when you don't have a whole room to do it, if it's just you getting that on your face changes the game. I mean, it really does. It gives your camera uh, more light to absorb and it's going to push out a better picture. So that's light, right? Uh, From there, I always recommend, as we were talking about just before we started, 
I have um, a silent USB fan over here because we have a little bit of air circulation issue and I push out a lot of hot air. Uh, so it's always important to have some kind of like if, because the problem you're going to have is, believe it or not, these microphones, whether you have USBs or XLRs, and we'll get into that in a second, they're going to pick up that AC. You may not hear it as you're going through it, but when you go through to clean up that sound, if that AC is running, you're going to hear it. So having, um, you know, those silent fans are great. It was $9 on Amazon. By the way, I'm not going to get any money for any of this. I'm just <laughs> telling you, they are available. And a lot of this basic stuff is a lot cheaper than you'd think. So getting in the microphones themselves, I've talked uh, a little bit about USB XLR. We're going to start with USB, which is what I'm using right here. It's called, this is a blue snowball. It is very hard to get because they are great. Okay. They're just, it's a great product. It comes with a preamp inside. So whether you're screaming from the mountaintops or just talking into it like this, it does a very good job of modulating your voice. And that also protects the microphone because the more power, you, you know, when you speak into it, that's actually power that it's pulling in and turning into a sound file. And the more you push into it, the more you can overload a microphone. You don't want to do that. These are real good about protecting. If you're by yourself or, you know, the interesting thing about Zoom is that it lends itself to a distance kind of podcast or interview, right? You're on your side, David's down there. The other David, Mr. David Brin's down there. You know, everybody can have their own kind of setup and do it from home. So having an individual USB microphone is great. It does a lot of the work for you. That's why even these, you know, as you say, like pro level podcasters, guys who are doing game streaming uh, or who are at home talking about po or politics and that kind of thing are going to use something like this because it's just easy. It's simple. And by the way, it's $50, you know, I mean, $50. Now, I cannot say that you're going to have it in two days because most of the time they're sold out. It's very hard to get one of these, and uh, I'm happy to have four of them. So it's, you know, they're very useful, and they're, they're very user-friendly. There's a good way to put it. The problem you run into with USB microphones, and there are some other types of workarounds that I'll mention in a bit, but they're cost prohibitive. So the problem you get with a USB microphone is that when you plug two of them into your computer, they're going to come in as a left and a right. And the problem with that is that you can just take that sound, you know, modulate it however you want in the software. And I know you have questions on that later and then spit it back out. The problem is, is if somebody's listening on their headphones, they're going to hear, you know, me in the left ear and you in the right ear. And when you're speaking, they don't hear anything. And it's very discombobulating. And especially when I started in 2018, but now in 2021, that's just unacceptable. You know that you can't do that. Not if you want to be taken seriously. So when I was doing two different USB mics, I had to pull the sound out as mono individual mono files and then recombine them. Well, the problem with that is that each different file had at some points the same sound. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's like back to the future. If you see yourself, you tend to have a little distortion, right? So I had to go through and pick each one of those points out when I was processing those podcasts. And it just took way too long. It was way too long. It was way too cumbersome. It was entirely inefficient. So I don't have it on screen right now, but I went and bought a mixer or, or an exterior bus and I bought two XLR mics. These are going to give you better sound anyway. They just are. You know, you're going to be able to uh, push them through uh, that bus and into the computer via USB connection is usually what you got to do. And they have USB buses out there. I believe that one was $120. And it is just, it's, it's, it, it changes the game. Uh, like I told you, I have this studio set up to where either I come in with a guest or I come in uh, with my business partner to do a light one. We record it. And within 30 minutes, I'm uploading that thing used to be hours of processing after. Now I will tell you, I used to spend a lot of, I had to spend a lot of time in here when we switched to this because you start getting into the minutia of volume modulation, right? We talked about the blue or the, or the, the blue Yeti is what they're called. It's blue is the brand name. It is a Yeti. Um, it does a lot of that for you. 
there's a there's an amp built into it. So it does a lot of preamp for you. You have to get used to that. So that's the next part I had to teach myself was how to how to work a mixer. That was fun. But you get better sound, you get better quality, you just do. And plus, you know, everything is coming through as one sound. So you can go into audition after and manipulate it however you want as one sound. Uh, which is great uh, for processing speeds and efficiencies. Um, now, there are a lot of different XLR mics out there. Um, I can tell you, you kind of get what you pay for. These are a brand called um, Usu, which are about $90 each. I am going to try to upgrade. And of course, the minute I need to spit out that brand, I can't. But they look like little ice cream cones. I'm sure you've seen them on a lot of different podcasts. I'm trying to remember the brand name of them, um, but they're closer to the $200 range. Eventually, once I, I kind of get the capital, I'm going to upgrade because you do get what you pay for. Because again, these microphones are taking in the power of your voice and turning it into sound. You know, this little blue snowball, and you can kind of tell when I hold it up here and compare it, there's a lot going on in here. And, you know, it, it can process a lot of that a lot better than these microphones can't. They still sound great. You know, I've done a couple in here, you know, and I can play around with the sound enough to where they sound good. And I'm not tooting my own horn. It took a lot of work. As Dale Carnegie will say, I have every right to say that. Because uh, <laughs> trust me, there were some bad ones out there too. Really bad ones. Whew. But, you know, the, the workaround for having multiple USBs is kind of like what we're doing now, where you have multiple people talking over the internet. You can do two computers in one room. The sound is never synced. You, you always got to work with that on a very minute level. It's, it's, and it, it's difficult. Um, it's, it's almost just easier to have two plugged in. Plus you have to guarantee that the other person's got a computer. Or you have to have a second one yourself. Want to take this time too to say, you always need to check in on the computer that you're getting because your sound card is going to make a huge difference. It just is. You're piping it through your computer, you know? So in this case, I'm taking this sound, sending it through a bus and then sending it to my computer. So in the end, my computer is going to interpret exactly how that sound is going to be in the end. So having a good sound card is very important. I mean, all this stuff plays in, by the way, when you're, and we'll get more into it in the software section, but when you're doing video, your graphics card makes a huge difference, right? So if you've got some old computer and you're trying to process video and it's going slow and it doesn't look right, that's your problem. So a lot of these can stack up. A lot of them you can push off. But anyway, so that, you know, there are some people that will use a post amp or a condenser hooked into um, the bus before it comes into the computer. That does a lot of your modulation and a lot of your evening uh, or evening the sound before you put it in there. I'm too finicky to, I, I'm, I still want to be involved in that step. So I still, I still process that sound as it works. Okay. Now, last, but certainly not least is the camera. So I have, and uh, I can't call it old. It's a, it's a DSLR camera. It's a Canon. It's a Mark IV. You can also, okay. Uh, in a lot of cases, use a Rebel. Uh, and, and I know I'm going to speed it up here a little bit. The problem you're going to have with DSLR cameras is most of them will only record for 30 minutes, and then they're going to turn off. Now, you can turn it right back on, so there might be a tiny skip. But one of the, th the other things I'm looking to upgrade is the, the camera. So I'm trying to get, uh, you know, because video cameras are designed to continue uh, to, to record as long as you need them to. I have a special hookup for this one with a mini HDMI to the computer. So I'm actually stream using that as a webcam. I'm not using my computer's camera. I'm using the, uh, the DSLR as, as a webcam as well. So that, I believe that covers, I believe that, that, that covers it. And I try to be expedient with it. No, no, thank you. Thank you. Actually, like, uh, it's a great, I think it, it brought in a lot to what we can open up to kind of some of the audience here because so we have harley and david i know harley does he does um some videos that he shows on security threats and and what it looks like to be on the hacker side for his ethical hacking um moments and then david Brin was talking about doing with some of the camps putting out you know maybe putting out some youtube stuff so i'd like i'd love to open it up just to maybe some audience questions if they have it about software i'm sure it will be brought up so 
Um, did, did anyone out there have any questions? Well, you just gave my eight-year-old a shopping list that's probably going to be for the year. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I mean, it's it's one of those things where okay. So if you're talking about if you're talking about it from an eight-year-old and he wants to do some kind of some kind of video recording, one of the things I can recommend it's called a Mevo. It's about four hundred dollars, and it's it's a video camera that hooks right into your computer. So that's a start, and then you go after a blue snowball which is, you know, 50 bucks. And, you know, I know everybody's Christmases are different or whatever, <laughs> but, you know, that, that gives you a starting place. Uh, you know, it, it gives you, gives your kids something to try. It's not too terribly expensive. Those, these are designed for intro or introductory podcasting. And from there you can try lights and stuff like that. One of the things I will say is don't go all in, you know, and it, it you know, in, in a few months, the kid's like, oh, well, we, you know, my, my, uh, my youngest stepson wanted to try streaming. He didn't really like it. So we kind of, we moved on, but I can tell you the nice thing about, and I'm, I'm tapping on my, my blue snowball here. It's a good investment. You know, you can use it, it you know, let's say you bought it for your kid. He didn't really like it. You can use it for work. You know, you can use it for a work zoom, anything like that. And, you know, anytime you're in a room and, you know, like if I was David right there, right. And he's got some windows off to the left. You don't, obviously you don't want the windows behind you because then you're just a shadow, right. You know, or if you do, maybe you want the ambiance for it. I don't know, but it, you know, you, there are ways you can manipulate wide light, excuse me. There's ways you can manipulate light at home to where you don't have to go crazy with ring lights or anything like that. I just happen to have a studio here. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, there, there are easy ways to get involved. And that would be the way I would recommend you start is, is just with a simple microphone. If he's really interested in trying it, a simple microphone and a simple camera um, can really push it off. And look, I will say this, you know, I'll, I, all the equipment in the world, all the, you know, preparation and everything, you still got to have a presence on the camera and you still got it. You still got to do it over and over and over again and get good at it. You know, there, yeah, there is an expression for it, but talent's only going to take you so far. A lot of it is practice. A lot of it is trying to improve as you move along. Uh, so starting simple, because I mean, I did, I started simple. I had two um, and I forgot to mention, you know, either arms or tripods. It kind of depends. I'm on a tripod right now. I got two arms for these to stabilize. Um, I figured I wouldn't get as violent as I normally do and bang the table. So I, I, I used a tripod. But, you know, it, I started off with two arms, two blues. And, you know, I already had the Adobe suite because that's what we use for the paper. You know, I already used Illustrator and excuse me, Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop. And we had been using Premiere to do the little videos we were shooting out in the field. So it, it just kind of lent itself. But I mean, I, I did not start off with much. I mean, this was a, a gradual ad as things went along. And as I saw that it was popular, but of course you've got to do the little things to make it, to generate interest. Yeah, that's a question that David Brin kind of brought up um, as well. So we've got equipment, right? We've got the presence. You've worked on that. You also have to have an audience. And uh, David Brin is over at Code Ninjas, which does uh, some really cool coding camps for kids. And he said they, they have some coming up this summer that are going to be on YouTube. So for, for a kid or really just anybody starting out, building up that audience do you go out and you build up the audience first and then do your podcast or do you get the podcast started and 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 naturally build up your audience how do you manage that and david uh, feel free to, to jump in if you want to clarify that question I, I have some questions around that that topic as well so i'd love to get your insight okay so i will tell you you know when when i started i had worked at the paper on and off uh, since I was nine. Okay. Nobody called child protective services. My dad's no longer with us. So nobody can do anything to him anyway. But when I came to work here full time 
after a, a brief stint at another job after college. My, my dad asked me to come work here. And one of the things I started doing was building our digital audience. You know, we, we, did, a, we did a website upgrade in 2011. We started focusing on expanding our Facebook profile in 2012. And we got more into Twitter probably around 2014 and then Instagram in 2016. And so here I had an audience, right? It was built in. You just had to hit the right subject matter for whomever was watching any variety of the social media, which, you know, we had plenty. Plus we posted everything on our website. So if people were just going directly to our website, they could find it there. So that being said, the question being, you know, do you start building an audience first and then do the podcast? No, you start, you just start, you start all of it. And, and you start small, but you start, you start all of it. I mean, like I said, I started, you know, if you could have seen this room, you know, I had plastic curtains on the wall to try to absorb sound, you know, and I had two, you know, two blue mics or two Yetis. And I mean, I just went, I just went for it. You know, you got to learn along the way. You want to give people something different. But my suggestion, and I mean, this is just answering the base question. I'm sure you're going to have more specific questions after this. But the best thing you could do is just like what Jim did with Chill with Jim. You just got to start. And you have to go back. I go back. Any podcast I do, I go back and listen to it. And I mean, it, it drives my business partner nuts because he's a, he's a sales guy. And we'll sit here and do one and talk about it. And I'll just be basically, you know, messaging him live like, man. At 12 minutes and 36 seconds, I, I, you know, we should have talked about this or, you know, I need to change the light on this side of the, on the side of the office, or I got to, you know, we got to do this, that, and the other. So you're really going back and checking yourself and really saying, where can we improve? And sometimes it's just like, look, you know, we had, we had some distortion when you and I really got into it. It was loud. It was fun, but the microphones that we have just couldn't handle it, you know, so that's just a problem you're going to have to solve down the road. You know, it's not going to bother people outside that much. So the initial answer to your question is you start with both, you know, and right now I can tell you, if you do not have a presence on any of the social media to leverage off the bat, you start with Facebook. You just do. That's where the people are right now. You know, everybody wants to say, well, Instagram is my, you know, I get that. Trust me, totally get it. But people who are making their money on Instagram already had a presence there. They're already, you know, monetizing the people that were following them at, you know, they are, they started something different, but they already had a following, right? That's kind of what I did. We added the podcast to what we were doing. I already had followers, right? When I started the podcast, we had, you know, 27,000 likes on Facebook. We're up over 30. Well, we're up over, over 30 follows. We have about 1500 people who will follow us, but will not like us. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if that's political or what. I, I, it doesn't really matter. They're still seeing our content. That's what matters to me and the people who come do the podcast. But anyway, and there's a lot of things you have to deal with in terms of metrics. You know, uh, Facebook is fun, right? Everybody knows about the dreaded algorithm. You got to deal with that. Uh, so a lot of times when you're first starting off, getting people to help you with the like, the share and the comment, huge. One of the ways we were able to build it so fast here is because we have about a dozen employees. And I told them, if you're not liking, sharing, and commenting on our post, or at the very least liking and commenting on our post, you're doing this company a disservice. You, you, know, you need to participate and then try to get your family to participate. Again, they don't have to share it. If it's some political story and they don't feel comfortable sharing it, don't. Like and a comment still counts. Now, those metrics update like every six months. So my recommendation is to go, uh, you know, go to Twitter or even just type in Google and you can Google, you know, what is the algorithm looking for this, uh, January, 2021? They're going to give you kind of a breakdown of best practices. You know, there are tons of blogs that are dedicated to that. And it's always good to keep checking in with those. I mean, trust me. As a media guy trying to get the news out to people, nothing infuriates me more. And I tell them, please go pick up the print copy than saying, I didn't see it. Well, that's because the algorithm did not show it to you, you know, and, and there's nothing I can do about that. I, I do apologize. I don't work for Facebook. So, you know, get started with the podcast. Be critical on yourself. Be critical. 
You have to be, you know, don't, you, you are not awesome. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm not being mean. I promise, you know, I'm not awesome. There's always, every time, like I will go back and watch this once they're finished with it. I'll go use, uh, I'll go download it and I'm going to watch it. And I'm going to say, how could I have been shorter with that answer? How could I have been better with that answer? How could I have done this differently? Uh, you know, you, you got to be critical with yourself because you got to remember this isn't writing and it's not a still photo, right? Writing, you get to edit. The still photos out there, it's done. I mean, you can kind of judge yourself on that, but it's real easy. This is active content is the best way to put it. It is active. It is out there. People are watching it. You can always do better. Always. It's never perfect. And that will seem daunting to some people until you kind of realize that as you do it, it, it just starts becoming part of who you are. You start doing it in, in other realms too. Like I will tell you, straight up, fairness boy, I got to lose some weight. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, Don't we it's, all, man? <laughs> well, it's just one of those things, you know, it's part of this being active content is it's just that it's active, you know, and I, I've started getting back into the gym, you know, I'm, I'm being pushed by family members and things of that nature, but also my business partner, because, you know, he and I, after we get done with this, are going to shoot two podcasts right after this, because we have to, because we have a, a slew of things to do tomorrow and no time on Friday. So it's got to get done, right? And if it's got to get done, you got to be ready to do it. And it is, it's hard. I mean, it, you know, I've gotten better at it. I've gotten better at talking, but I will tell you, I'm an introvert. First couple of podcasts I did, I was exhausted. I was exhausted after it was over. So, you know, that was one thing I looked at myself and said, you got to you got to get used to this. You got to do better, uh, That those sorts of things. So to, to go back to that base question, just start. You just got to start. And, and start recording, start trying to improve, make a list, you know, start writing it down because it'll mean more, quite frankly, it'll mean more if you start writing down a list. And then, you know, some of it's going to be tech stuff that's going to come later. Some of it's going to be things that you can practice and improve the next time. Harley, did, did you have some, some more that you wanted to get on the uh, building the audience here? I kind of, yeah. So I've got a question for you. So as they kind of shared, I'm, I'm into like ethical hacking and pen testing. Um, and I started doing some of my own content creation. Like I started with a blog and then later that turned into a, a YouTube channel. And now I'm even like trying to transition more where I'm still going to do YouTube, like hacking tutorials and stuff and user awareness training and stuff. But I also want to start bringing industry professionals that are in my field, having them come on and, and share their story. And I've done a couple already on my channel and I'm finally, I finally feel like I'm gaining some traction. It's been like six to eight months of just like nobody listening. <laughs> and then now I'm, I feel like I'm actually finally starting to get somewhere. I guess my question is, how do you, how do you stay motivated to continue to produce like quality content that takes a lot of time when nobody's listening? You know, Good like how, question. How do you, how do you continue? Like, where does that motivation come from? That is an excellent question. And I will tell you right now, it's kind of interesting. You know, a, a lot of that is going to depend on whether or not you're focused on improving yourself. So what I just talked about, that list of, you know, I could do this better. I could do that better. I could try this. I could improve my tech in this area, that kind of thing. Because when you're focused on yourself and trying to improve yourself, people are going to start noticing on the one hand. And on the other hand, you don't, you don't see any of those people not watching. You just don't. You're not worried about it. The other thing I will say is just inherently with all the noise on social media and the internet today, it takes time. So, you know, with our Light Company podcast, you know, we're getting 10 views. And, you know, I, one of them is Melanie, one of them is my business partner's wife, one of them is my mom, you know, I mean, it, it's just, it, it's not, it's not going to hit until it does. And that's so cliche. And I'm not real happy to say it that way, but it just, that's the way that this kind of stuff works. It's not going to hit until it does. Now, the interesting thing about that is some people get lucky, you know, it's three months and then they get that one person that says, wow, it's pretty good. You know, one of the things I will say is there, there's a balance between shameless self-promotion 
and you know not doing enough on social media i can say that you know having a good balance between the two is is good you kind of want to be in the middle right if you get a new episode coming out that's very popular or you think it might be popular you're looking for people to tap to try to share it right when i was uh, when i did the real life real crime thing the first thing i asked woody overton to do was go hit that share button i would text him you know, as soon as it was up, as soon as I posted on Facebook and he did and boy took off, you know, so that's sort of a secondary part of that is you're talking about an industry specialist, finding people, ladies or gentlemen that already have a following or, or like yourself kind of right there, you know, they're on the edge doing a collaboration with somebody on that point can sh- you share an audiences that can push you over the edge. That'll get you new viewers. Cause you never know whether you're just putting it on YouTube, uh, I would always suggest trying to share a preview or share a link to it on your other social media. You never know when the algorithm on any kind of social media is going to deliver it to that person that's going to help you, that, that's going to push you off, you know, or deliver 100 new viewers or whatever. I will know? admit it's, it's easier now to get other people who are doing content creation or other people in the industry that have a following behind them. It's easier now to actually get them to respond <laughs> to your yeah. message when you talk about collaborating. That, like Once you have a, even just a small bit of a following, it's like when you have nobody, nobody wants to, nobody wants to give you a chance, you know, it's just like, how do you even begin? Um, and so it's, it's brutal. Anybody who, who successfully, you know, produces content each week, I, kudos go out to you because it's, it's a tough gig. Yeah, it is. It, it's a very tough gig, especially when you're sitting there thinking about, you know, you're still trying to run a business, right? And, you know, it, you have to balance it. There's that word again, but you got to understand too, and take this from a guy who, you know, had a lot of opportunities as a kid and as a young adult because of advertising dollars. Right now, you know, if you are an, un- for established businesses, I still think that traditional media and advertising is great. It is. But for newer businesses, getting your name out there fastest is all about personal content creation and providing information. So you're already doing that. So as you said, you know, once you kind of get some people, which takes time, man, yeah, it is. It's a grind. It's a slog. The best way to make that grind go faster is to do the improvement stuff I talked about. But finding those people to collaborate with. Absolutely. There's no other valuable thing to do than that because you cross paths with their audience. Uh, A lot of times they'll come start watching you, your audience will start go watching them. And and, and it really helps you grow and being able to find a lot of those people is great. The other thing I will recommend too, if you're, you know, make sure you're recording those shows, obviously you are, you're uploading YouTube, cut out sections, use them as promotional content. That's invaluable. I mean, you've got little sections right there already. They belong to you. You know, all you have to do is open up whatever video thing you're using. Um, Again, I use Adobe products. So I use Premiere and Audition to do most of our stuff. All of our graphics we do either in Illustrator or, um, excuse me, um, in Illustrator or Photoshop. Oh, well, Thank you, Harley. Appreciate it. I just, he just said he had to have a hard stop, but yeah, yeah I know we're, we're running in at three o'clock, but I wanted to throw that in. So there are a lot of options software wise. You can go Google some stuff. Um, I just recommend uh, the Adobe suite, tough, tough learning curve at first, but they all integrate together and it makes it a whole lot easier once you kind of get your feet underneath you. Oh man. Wow. Awesome. Awesome information. Wow. Thank you, McHugh. This has been really, really great. Um, talk about a good storyteller. I was just kind of just getting lost in your story here. I'm like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to be the interview guy. I'm sitting here just like lost in your story. So. Well, I didn't mean to take over. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's good. It's good, man. Um, we appreciate all the knowledge that you have shared with us today. Um, just can you quick share um, some how, how people can contact you if they want to maybe get some advertisement with the, the news out there or or anything else like that? Sure. Yeah. If you're, if you're interested in doing a podcast, uh, you can email me McHugh at LPN1898.com. My cell phone number is 225-931-1012. We have print advertising options. We have digital advertising options. We have the podcast, of course. I very much recommend that if you're going to be doing an advertising run uh, to please start with a podcast. I know you guys at Strix, 
Uh, I'm looking forward to our second one. We're going to be able to dive in a little bit deeper uh, on, on some of the stuff y'all do, which is going to be fun. And then, of course, I'm going to be able to reference the first one we did. It's on the Internet. It's eternal. We can exactly. use it forever. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, anybody can contact me at either one of those. Of course, as mentioned, we have print, digital, and audio and video options as well. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, McHugh, for sharing that with us. I hope uh, I know we've all learned quite a bit, and I hope I see some new podcast uh, things coming out from David, some new uh, techniques coming out of Harley over there. So, um, David. What's on the agenda for next week's Chill with Jim? You're on mute. I'm on mute. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> next week, we are going to be following up on uh, the Chill with Jim from, from last week, actually. So we talked about all those scary things. Uh, I, I know I left that Chill with Jim uh, sweating and very, <laughs> very nervous. I'm just now recovering. Uh, talking about the cybersecurity threats that we can expect to see here in, in 2021. We're going to follow up with that, uh, with some things. What do you need to do uh, to protect yourself as a business? So what what efforts do you need to focus on as a business coming up here in 2021 to protect yourself from those cyber threats? Just an article on that. Oh, yeah? Oh, perfect. Well, yeah. we'll see you next we week. Will have I hope. Lost. <laughs> content is done <laughs> david's got it taken care of <laughs> I'll, I'll just i'll leave it to you man that's good um well and i just noticed we have a McHugh david david diarman and a david Bryn. so to all of the davids involved thank you so much McHugh. we really appreciate it um brad wasn't on here but actually brad is someone that we met through your podcast with david um and and it's just it's it's really beautiful to see kind of the the way you're able to share uh, a lot of people's businesses and help them out with this podcast. So we do appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next week. It's the same chill time at the same chill network. And we appreciate you coming out. Adios, everybody.